The year is 1914. Europe is at war. Allies are fighting the Central Powers. The British Navy is the world's largest and most powerful. Britain decides to leverage this power and starve Germany and Austria Hungary into submission. The British Navy begins a blockade of Germany. It cuts off vital maritime supplies. Ships are stationed in the English Channel, the Nazi and the Adriatic Sea. They seize all accommodations bound for central powers. Food supplies begin running out in Germany. There is a shortage of fertilizers, grain, potatoes, meat, dairy products, even powdered milk. By 1918, some 763,000 German civilians die of starvation. This hunger blockade plays a major role in the defeat of the Central Powers. This is a story from the First World War. Times have changed, but war strategies have not. Even today, countries are weaponized food to swing wars. Today, I am going to tell you about these hunger games in war. So this is uh, Ukraine and it is responsible for 10% of the global wheat export and 15% of the maize export and 13% of the barley and 31% of sunflower oil export and 61% of sunflower cake export. Ukraine is a key player in the global food supply chain and Ukraine is at war. Russia has invaded it. Russian President Vladimir Putin wants Ukraine Ukrainians refuse to surrender, they are being armed by the West, so the war has turned into a frozen conflict and cost in this conflict is food. Ukraine and its Western allies accuse Russia of weaponizing food, squeezing supplies to swing the war. They say Russia is starving Ukrainians into submission. It is seeking global support by leveraging food security and tilting the demand and supply balance. Russia, on the other hand, is blaming the West for the rising prices. One of the first things that happened after this war began was the blocking of the Black Sea ports. 75 of Ukrainian's agriculture exports go via the Black Sea. Russia cuts off this maritime export. Said this route could be used to import weapons into Ukraine. Kiev said Moscow was trying to starve the world, then it accused Russia of attacking Ukraine's crops. In Kryasan, for example, Russian shelling set wheat fields on fire. McKinsey estimates that Ukraine's crop production will drop up to 45% in the next harvest season. Russia was also accused of attacking food infrastructure, of bombing storage facilities and processing plants by March. The United Nations uh, was warning about a hurricane of hunger and it wasn't off the mark. Look at what happened in Ukraine. In cities that had fallen to Russia people were reportedly blocked from accessing food and these are western reports. But we know that the United Nations was also denied access so there was food in Ukrainians warehouses but not in the kitchens. Ukraine said Russia was letting the food rot to secure the submission of its people. Well, did it work? At least 2 million Ukrainians have moved to Russia. A lot of them were from the besieged cities. Around 50,000 others have applied for Russian citizenship. Outside Ukraine, some 400 million people depend on Ukrainian grain. 400 million, that's a huge number. As exports drop, these people began feeling the pinch. When the West sanctioned Russia, the crisis become worse. So yes, Russia has a point where it says Western sanctions made inflation and food shortage worse. Uh, let me show you some more numbers. Ex Russia exports 24% of the world's wheat, 2% of maize, 14% of barley, and 24% of sunflower oil, and 20% of sunflower cake. Also, 15% of white fish, 13% of fertilizer, mineral intermediates, the likes of ammonia, sulfur, etc. Also, 16% of finished fertilizers. If you combine Russian Ukraine's exports, the numbers look like this huge numbers, you know. Uh, and Russia Ukraine together supply 11.8% of global food calories. The war has triggered a calorie deficit. It added to Nigeria's hunger crisis. 43% of Nigerians already live below the poverty line. More than a third of Nigeria's children have stunted growth. Nigeria depends heavily on wheat from Russia. 
and now it is staring at a famine. Same with Somalia. It relies on Russia and Ukraine for more than 90% of its wheat imports. Look at Egypt. The traditional baladi flatbread is a staple in the country, but Egypt imports 80% of its wheat from Russia and Ukraine. The war has pushed Egypt to the edge. Lebanon too relies on Ukraine for over 60% of its wheat. The country is just about recovering from the Beirut blast. The 2020 explosion destroyed the wheat silos there. The Ukraine war has pushed this country into a food security crisis. In the Sahel region, the United Nations had to cut food rations for refugees by up to half. Why? Because food shortage. Globally, the war has pushed food prices up by more than 12%. Russia is blaming Western sanctions for this. It also blames Ukrainian mines around the Black Sea ports. You see, Ukraine has dropped mines in the Black Sea to uh, deter an amphibious attack by Russia. The World Food Programme says 47 million people will fall into acute food insecurity this year. Russia says it is happy to ensure safe passage of food. But it's up to Kiev to clear its uh, ports of uh, mines. On 22nd of July, the United Nations and Turkey brokered a deal. Ukraine cleared some routes of mines. Ships from Ukraine's uh, sports finally set sail, but the crisis will not be resolved overnight. Did you know weaponizing food is a crime? The United Nations Security Council Resolution 2417 says using starvation of civilians as a method of warfare may constitute a war crime and this is a crime that states have been guilty of since times immemorial. Romans weaponized food to destroy Carthage. We are talking about 146 BC. Hitler starved 4.2 million Soviets during the Second World War. America too guilty of Hunger Games. During the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln signed labor court. The order said it is quote unquote lawful to starve the hostile belligerent armed or unarmed. You may be surprised to learn that uh, even in South Asia, uh, India also the victim of the Hunger Games who starved India. Uh, Britain did. Historians note that colonial Britain would quash Indian rebellions by ravaging crops and poisoning wells. Yes, I'm talking about subcontinent. It basically used hunger to command obedience. So, let's look at some uh, recent examples. Uh, Yemen. Some 17.4 million Yemenis are food insecure. That's 17.4 million in a population of 30 million. 2.2 million children are acutely malnourished. How do you think that happened? In 2014, Houthis captured Yemen's capital, Sana'a. A Saudi-led co coalition intervened. It shut down the Red Sea port at Hodida. That is the main entry point for Yemeni's food imports. Then we have Ethiopia. It is in the middle of a war. Ethiopian armed forces are fighting in the rebel-controlled region of Tigri. Those living in Integra say Ethiopian soldiers are blocking food aid. They are stopping farmers from harvesting soldiers and also stealing seeds. Even killing livestock and looting farm equipment. You see, food is a basic necessity for all of us. It does not matter whether you live in Yemen, Ethiopia, India, Pakistan, or Cambodia, or if you ever go, uh, you go without food, you're likely to die within 40 to 60 days. Capitalism has commodified food, and war has weaponized it. It has put our health and well-being on the front line. And what's surprising is that despite so many examples in history, despite numerous Hunger Games, the world has not yet learned its lessons. This is our world. It has six breadbasket regions, Canadian prairies and US Midwest, Northwestern Europe, Southern Russia and Ukraine, Northern India, Eastern China and Brazil and Argentina. The ongoing war in Ukraine has set one food basket on fire, the others are not quite safe either. What happens if tomorrow China and Taiwan go to war and the US is dragged in? So, which it will most likely to be. So, 40% of corn exports are from the US. 30% of rice is grown in China. 34% of soy comes from the US and 18% of wheat 
from China. What happens to the countries that depend on these crops? South Korea imports rice from China. So does Turkey, Japan, Egypt. What happens to all of these countries? The world must secure its food, shields from war. And how do we do that? One, becoming self-sufficient. Increase production at home. Countries must invest in agriculture science, encourage innovation in the food sector. Today, Yemen is facing unprecedented food crisis because it is completely dependent on imports for staples. Solution number two, diversify both uh, your staple and your source of production. India makes for a great example here. The last 10 years, India has added 100 new varieties of wheat. It has diversified production. Today, India has the maximum varieties of wheat in the world. Three, countries must improve storage facilities Keep a healthy stock of staples because while governments may not be able to uh, control what happens in a country thousands of miles away, what they can do is ensure that their own people do not go hungry because of external hunger games. So, subscribe to Samar Hamdani and I hope this content uh, will help you and guide you about the food starvation uh, in near future. Stay blessed.